Today I want to show you how to hit your target by using the Ausdump Verfahren. So, let us get into the submenu. Now, the Ausdump Verfahren is a historical method. It was historically used by U-boat commanders of the German Kriegsmarine in World War II. And the advantage of this method is that you do not need to gather any data on your target. You do not need to know its speed, you do not need to know its angle and bow, and you do not need to know the distance to target. And I think this method is both interesting for people who play casually or for newcomers because it's simple to use. But it's also interesting for those of us who like to play historically or who like to play with a lot of realism because, well, it was used in real life and for a good reason. Now, I'm now in a test mission. Um, this is the Merchant Convoy AI test mission. You can find it in the historical missions in the main menu. There is a convoy here and we want to sink this tanker. I hope you can see that. And one of the disadvantages of this method is that our firing solution will only be valid for this target, not for the other two. However, if we really wanted to, we could use this method to calculate the target's speed very precisely. And that in turn would help us to shoot at the other targets as well. But this is something for another day. Right now we will concentrate on a single target and how to hit it without, without gathering any target data. The other disadvantage of this method is that it is a bit time consuming. But I will speed up the time from time to time just to, so that um, this is not taking too long. We start by placing our crosshair on one distinct feature of our target. I'm choosing the little mast on the bridge. I hope that you can see the bridge of the target right here and there is a little mast on it. I guess that won't be visible on YouTube, but trust me. And I'm placing my crosshair now directly over it. And now I observe if the target is staying on a constant bearing or if the bearing to target is changing because the target is moving through my crosshair. And right now I see yeah, the mast is starting to appear on the right side of my crosshair, so the target is gaining on me. If we look into this here, let me see, into this chart, there you can see um, the method explained as well. Basically what we want to achieve is a collision course with our target. We want to travel at such a speed and such a heading that we would hit the target with our submarine at point A. What this does is our bearing to target will remain constant during the whole time. The AOB will remain constant the whole time. And our TDC can use this to calculate a firing solution. Or you can use this mathematical formula here to calculate the target's speed once you have a constant bearing to it. Because you see, in the game we have this recognition manual and it gives us perfect information on every type of ship that we can encounter. For example, modern cargo ship. What does that even mean? Historically there were a lot of different types of cargo ships and each one of them had slightly different dimensions. We know in the game modern cargo ship has a length of 154.4 meters and a mast height of 37 meters. This allows us to use the IOBF to calculate range to target and it allows us to use the UYACT to calculate the target speed and it allows us to again using the IOBF to calculate the target's AOB. But all this would not have been possible in real life because this is data that a real submarine captain would not have on its target. He would look through a periscope and see a ship in the distance. That's it. He does not know 
which ship that is. He does not know how long it is, how tall it is, how fast it is, nothing. Now, what submarine commanders did a lot was to estimate those things. Or they used methods such as the Ausdampfverfahren or Auswanderungsverfahren, which we will talk about in another video, to um, get a firing solution. So, as we see, our target is gaining on us, and there's two things that we can do to make sure that we are on a collision course. Since the target is gaining on us, the first thing and the easiest thing that we can do is we can play with our speed. We can speed up. And I will do that. I'm right now at 3 knots. I'll increase my speed to 4 knots. And we'll see what happens. Now the change in speed is of course not instantaneous. You have to wait for a little bit. So this is something that we will do right now. I'll speed up time. So okay, our speed is now 4 knots. 4.1 in fact. Right now I'll again place my crosshair on this mast. Come on. And I'll observe if I'm gaining on the target or if the target is again gaining on me. Ideally, and doing a real attack, you would now do this, place your crosshairs on the target, and you would lower your periscope, leave it underwater for half a minute, then pop it back up again, and see if the bearing has changed. Right now I can see this already. Now we are gaining on our target. We are going too fast. So I wish to slow down a little bit. I really wish it would be possible to magnify this scale here. So to make it more precise to order a speed. But yeah, there are a lot of things that would be nice to have in silent Again, we have to wait a little bit for the submarine to reach its new speed. Um, we are now at 3.8 knots apparently. And again, I place my crosshair on the mast. And I observe. And now I see again the target is gaining on us, quite substantially in fact. So, I guess we need to obtain a speed of about 3.9 or 4 knots. So we'll try speeding up Knoten. a little bit. Fahrt 3 Knoten. 3.8 is still not enough I think, but we'll see. Again, I'm placing the crosshair on the target. I'm observing and I can see the target is gaining on us. So we still need to go a little bit faster than 3.8 knots. I think 4 knots will be ideal. Fahrt beträgt 4 Knoten. Fahrt beträgt 3 Knoten. Sweet spot here. Fahrt beträgt 3 Knoten. It's quite hard. Let's see maybe Fahrt beträgt 4 Knoten. 3.9 Okay, looks like we are going at the speed of 3.9 knots now. Let's have another look. Okay, we are gaining actually on our target again. So we are just going a little bit too fast. But changing the speed is now not precise enough. What we will do now is we will change our heading. And I will turn my boat a little bit in towards the target, since we are gaining on it. This should bring Ruder me on a null. direct collision course again. You have to keep in mind that when you order speed changes, or you order a turn, that your boat needs a moment to reach the new heading or to reach the new speed. Even uh, now though, the boats did stop to turn 
when um, I ordered the rudder and midships, but the boat will still continue to turn a little bit more past that point because of momentum. So once again, placing our crosshair on the target's mast and I'll start the clock. If I can keep a constant bearing for 3 to 5 minutes, then I know that I'm on a good collision course. So let's speed up the clock. Okay, I see I'm still gaining on the target. I need to turn in a little bit more. Ruder, null, grad backboard. Not a lot. Ruder, null. This might be enough. Okay, we've now stopped turning, but you can see we are still turning and the momentum of our turn is carrying us a little bit further. Again, placing the crosshair on the mast as accurately as I can. There we go. Starting the clock and having a look in a few minutes. Two minutes, three minutes, this is good. This is looking good. Four. Yeah, okay, this is looking actually quite good. So we'll go with this. Now how to set up our TDC. Okay, what we do is we will look at our own speed, 3.9 knots, and for the speed we will enter our own speed. So 3.9 is about here. And then for the AOB, we will look at how uh, far away our own bearing, no, how far away the target bearing is from our zero degree bearing. So this is a bearing of 308 degrees approximately, 308, yeah. And from our zero degree, this is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. 52 degrees away from our zero degree bearing. And we are looking at the target's starboard side. So now we will go ahead and enter 52 degrees as AOB. It's about I really wish there was a method to zoom in on the dials when you set them, that would help. Okay, like this. And now the only thing that we need to do is to estimate our range to target. This is one way to do it. Um, another way would be to simply turn our periscope to a zero degree gyro angle position to turn our whole boat and then to fire once the target is in our crosshairs. But we can also just keep this course. It might be beneficial for a follow-up shot. And we will estimate our range to target. My guess is that this target is about 7 kilometers away. Six and a half, something like that. Usually, I wouldn't fire now. I would wait to get much closer to my target. But I want to demonstrate that this method is quite accurate and that you are able to hit target at long targets at long distance with it. So this is why I will be shooting at such a long distance which you would usually not do, usually we give a way to get about a kilometer away from the target or even closer and then fire. Torpedoes are expensive. Now, okay, I've set about seven kilometers. Lock that in. I will fire a salvo of tubes one and four to make sure that I get at least one hit in, which is also historical. Set the depth to 8 meters, magnetic detonators. I think this is 
is closer than seven kilometers. Yeah, I think this is actually closer. So I'll put this to six. And as a spread angle, I will set this to yeah, one and a half degrees. There we go. Five and a half is my guess. Um, that's all there is to it. Flood the tubes. One. Los. Los. Yeah. Okay. Let's have a look at our torpedoes. There they go. They are going through their turn. And let's speed up time. I used the slow setting, so they are they will take some time to get to the target you will be a little bit more precise if you use a faster setting, but since I was not quite sure how far away our target is, the slow setting gives us the maximum range. Right now we are just having a look and these do look good. I sh think at least one of them should hit, but you see that um, sometimes you get torpedoes that are a little bit faulty and I think at least one of them is. Torpedoes might veer off course by a few degrees, they might go slower or faster than intended. It's historical. So I think either this one is uh, a little bit broken and going way too slow, or this one is going too fast and a little bit more to the right than it should. But yeah, that's just one of the things that you have to deal with. Now. Our torpedoes will actually miss, because right now the target has spotted the torpedoes and it will start to speed up. So this torpedo will miss as well. But you have seen that with our spread we have bracketed the target quite well. So ironically, if we had fired a single torpedo, it might have actually hit. Um, yeah, happens. Happens, happened in real life, happens in the game. It's part of the deal. Now, that was the short little tutorial on the Ausdampfverfahren. So, just to... Just to go through the required steps again. Make sure that you are on a constant bearing at least three minutes. Better if it's more set the speed to your own speed, set the AOB to the target bearing and keep in mind the side of the target you're looking at, starboard side, starboard, port side, port. And estimate the range and then fire. That's all there is to it. So next time we'll hopefully get torpedoes that aren't broken and we'll be able to hit our targets. But this is it for now. Have a nice day. Um, try this out for yourselves. See if you have more luck than I do. And goodbye.